Welcome to a brand new video guys. Today we are in the Cinnamon Grand Hotel and I talked about this hotel a little bit in the last video. And so unfortunately we're not here to stay but we are here to try one of their uh, signature restaurants here. It's really cool. It's a Sri Lankan buffet called Nugagamu. So it's a Sri Lankan buffet and it's designed to look like a old kind of traditional Sri Lankan village. And it's kind of weird the way you got to get in here. It's kind of hidden and it's in the hotel but it's you got to go through their pub that's downstairs and there's like not a lot of signs so make sure you ask someone in the lobby. That way you don't get lost like I did. But yeah it's really cool. I mean look at this. So it's designed to look like a Sri Lankan um, village and they serve all traditional classic Sri Lankan dishes. Alright guys, so before we start eating, let's go check out a little bit of this area. There's a little stream going through here and then everything's made the like a clay looking structure so it emulates that village feel and it's very cool it's a little scarecrow and then all these plants on the ground are actually real vegetables i don't know if they actually use them in the cooking but uh, that's what that is it's a little bar and they use the, the straw on the roofs just like they traditionally would as well But yeah, it's super cool. And now let's go check out what food they have. I got a seafood soup here. Looks good. I got a traditional Sri Lankan bread. All right, so it looks like they just have a bunch of curries here with some rice, fish head curry. Spicy crab. Mutton. And then that one right there is actually tripe. So the stomach lining of the cow. Which you don't traditionally see, but I absolutely love it. We just got a bunch of sambals and chutneys and stuff over here. Freshly made hot ribs as well. Got some like onion sambals. Crepes, some milk to eat. guys so we got some hoppers to start with and I've never seen these like red hoppers before that's new to me and then we just got a traditional white one as well there's some music playing I hope you guys can hear me and see the, the video because it's also dark and we got a little bit of egg roti here some pull roti which is uh, just the same thing basically but made with coconut in it so you get little bites of coconut and we also got a little bit of the goat curry and a couple sand balls here. So the first one is a sort of, it's got onions and it's more chili based, so it's a lot, it's a lot spicier. And then you also got a sini sand ball, which is uh, onions like kind of slow cooked in sugar and it's really good. Yeah, let's dig in. Uh, everything looks really good here. Looks super authentic. Even the kind of plate where they use is like the clay plates and the clay pots is what they serve the food in as well. Try a bit of this goat curry. Oh boy, that is quite spicy. I'm surprised. I was not expecting it to be that spicy. Ooh. It's still good though. Very flavorful. A lot of spice in the meat is very tender. It's like been slow cooked in that, um, in that clay pot. So it's really penetrated the deepest depth of that of that goat. All right, let's try some of this pull roti, which is really soft and nice. Dip it in some of this gravy. Mmm, a lot of coconut, and also some like tiny pieces of, like green chili in there as well. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's very good. Very um, salty, they put a lot of salt in here, and I'm not complaining because I love salt. What you want to do is take a piece of this. 
and put some of this red sambal on top, just like that. Oh yeah, this is just my first plate. It's already pretty spicy and I'm already kind of sweaty. I think this is much better because everything is done so well. There's no, there's no miss because it's like Sri Lankan traditional. So they know how to make this stuff really well. And also it doesn't cost as much to make. But I just figured this would be a really good opportunity to show you guys um, this place because it's a really cool vibe and also the food is good and it's traditional Sri Lankan food and they've got every everything you could think of that's traditionally Sri Lankan and it's just a great place to kind of explore and find out what you like about Sri Lankan cuisine so you know when you go somewhere else what to get. Alright guys round two here now we got some um, traditional Sri Lankan roast pong. It's basically like really hard bread is what it is and it works really well with soaking up all kinds of like curries and stuff so people here absolutely love it. It's like in between like a milk crust and bread is what the texture is. So you get a little bit of crunch but also breadiness to soak up the juices and if you're also in Sri Lanka make sure to get some narang juice. It's like a hybrid in between an orange and a lime and it's a completely unique flavor. I think I also had some in Singapore so if you're there, try it. It's one of my favorite citrus fruits. Anyway, I'm not usually a fan of fish curries but they had fish head curry and I had to try it and already I can tell that this texture is completely different to a regular fish curry because this meat is just so tender. Let's try it. Mm. Yeah, and that curry is really good as well. I'm still not a huge fan of fish, but if I had to eat fish, I'd probably eat this one because the meat is just fall off the bone tender. It's almost closer to like crab meat than it is like, like traditional fish meat. And now I got some lemongrass rice. Let's try it with some of this. So in Sri Lanka, they use this like very different grain of rice that's really short. As you can see, it's like a very short grain rice. And it's it doesn't stick together as much as like jasmine or your other traditional rices. And it's kind of a texture you got to get used to, I'm not going to lie. And then these right here are papadums. Uh, they're just kind of like a garnish you eat with the with your, like your rice and curry to add a little bit of like crunchy texture to it. And then, last but not least, we've got some fried anchovies. It's a very traditional Sri Lankan dish, and they stir fry it in like chilies and onions and all sorts of stuff. And again, I'm not the biggest fan of like fishy stuff, but it is good, and you gotta try it when you're here. Let me tell you, it's definitely a flavor you gotta get used to. It's not just fried, it's also like salt dried in the sun and then fried. So it's like sun-dried fish. And as you can imagine, it's um, quite the flavor. All right guys, so I know this plate is a little bare, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of everything that they had. Uh, string hoppers are basically just like rice flour and they kind of like squeeze little strings out together like that. And you usually eat a lot of them at a time, but I just got one just to show you guys and then you just obviously, you know, just like any Sri Lanka food, just dip it in some curry and then eat it. Now I'm not the biggest fan of them, that's why I only got one. And then I also got some jackfruit. So this is jackfruit curry and you find a lot of vegetarian places serving it because it has kind of like that stringy texture of chicken. But if you eat meat, you can definitely tell a difference. Yeah, it tastes nothing like chicken to me. But You'll find it out there. It's pretty popular curry. Also got pot roasted chicken, which I've never heard of. And it looks pretty good. Mmm. That's actually really good. It's like a dry chicken curry. It's perfectly tender, fall off the bone. I really like that pot roast chicken. This next plate I'm about to show you is probably my favorite plate of Sri Lankan food. Alright, so here it is. It's called pittu. And it's basically like this kind of crumbly like 
rice flour texture and they pack it all together and you you eat it with coconut milk so he's bringing me some right now and you just pour it over it and this is actually baba curry which is basically tripe the stomach lining of the beef and it's one of my favorite curries of all time and then you got a little bit of some pole sambals which is basically coconut sambal it's mixed with some chili and this one's with green chili and yeah this is to me one of the most perfect Sri Lankan meals you can have all right guys so he just brought me some of the coconut milk that you would pour on top of this so you just kind of grab some and then pour it on top like that and since this the pit too is kind of dry it uh, soaks up a lot of this coconut milk and it makes for a very different and unique flavor so let's dig in yes as you can see it's very very crumbly and there's also coconut mixed into this it's kind of like mushed up rice almost and then there's also coconut mixed into it so you get like a bite of that coconut it has its own very unique flavor that uh, is hard to explain really but if you have eaten it you know exactly what I'm talking about so let's go ahead and mix some of this this tripe and then some of this coconut sambal and that there is one of the most perfect Sri Lankan bites it's so good I've waited so long to try this meal again because it's obviously not easy to make this in the US or find the ingredients you need. So tripe is very gelatinous, almost like, kind of like the fatty part of bacon, but it's not fat at all. It's kind of just like really chewy and elasticy in texture. And there's also like an odd gamey taste like you get in lamb and duck. So if that's something you don't like, then you probably won't like this. So I think the tripe and the pitu this year is I think the best example of why you should come and try this place out. It's not something you would probably try if you're just out and about at a restaurant, but here you can try basically every traditional Sri Lankan dish, including, you know, some of the, the more out there ones. So this restaurant is mainly outside, and then on top of that, the curries are spicy. So I'm just kind of pouring sweat here, but I can't stop eating because it's so good. Well guys, I'm getting pretty full because even though I've been just trying stuff out, Sri Lankan food is uh, pretty heavy. But I wanted to go check out dessert because I got some traditional Sri Lankan desserts. All right, so it looks like we got some buffalo curd. Traditionally eaten with like a treacle uh, of palm sugar. And then we got some fruit, some wood apple, star fruit, papaya. I'm not sure what that is or that. That looks like an Indian dessert. And then we got some like kind of traditional cakes that you would eat like during like Sri Lanka New Year. There's another one, just kind of like fried, fried string hoppers basically with some sugar on top. And these are kind of like a sesame dessert and it's very sweet. I'm not really a huge fan of like the texture of it or the dessert in general. And here is a dessert called Wakala Pan. It's basically a Sri Lankan caramel pudding. It's made with palm sugar. And then we got some uh, sago, which is supposed to be really healthy for you. And then more traditional Sri Lankan, like New Year's stuff, followed by some passion fruit, which I'm guessing is in season because a lot of places we've been going to has been serving it. And also some jackfruit. All right, guys, so I've got a little sample plate of desserts here. because so I wanted to try some that I already know I'm not a huge fan of, just so I can tell you what it tastes like. Let's start with the curd. So this is a buffalo milk kind of yogurt and it's a lot more sour than traditional yogurt. It's closer to like a Greek yogurt and they didn't have the traditional treacle that you would eat it with. They just had sugar and I probably didn't put enough sugar on this to be honest because it is really sour. You know what? That one's not as sour. I think it's kind of like a toned back version maybe because it's a buffet. So maybe people aren't put off by it, but it's very creamy and tart is the best way to describe it. So you do need sugar. It is definitely like an acquired taste. And next is the Batala Pan. So this is basically just like a Sri Lankan caramel pudding. 
has a texture of flan and honestly this one's pretty good but let's move on to the next plate here that has some very traditional Sri Lankan New Year's foods again so this is called asmi and it's like a fried um, string hopper it's basically just you know fried dough and then they put some uh, sugar on it very simple it's hard not to like like it's just good but next I'm excited to try the jackfruit here still has the seed in it so you got to get that out somehow let's just break it open like this and there's the seed let's pop that out and maybe take the skin out as well just like that that's what you're left with the meat and so we are really used to eating this with salt and pepper and I know that sounds weird but it tastes really good because it really brings out the flavor of the jackfruit it's really a slept on fruit super tropical tasting very easy to eat it's got a great texture like Laffy Taffy's and you know they're probably healthy too I mean that was basically the buffet here they got some really cool dishes some very authentic Sri Lankan food and some even and even some desserts that you should try here it's also just a really cool place to hang out and spend time with your family and you can explore and kind of get used to what we eat and also pick out the stuff you like so when you go to like a bigger restaurant you know what to get it's also cheaper than the other buffets and since it's specialized in one cuisine everything is really good it's not just one thing or the other way like you would get in an international buffet yeah so i mean come try it out it's at the cinnamon grand here in colombo and it's called nugagama and it's a buffet style sri lankan uh, restaurant and if you want a true authentic taste of sri lanka there's no better way to do it than coming to someplace like this i mean five thousand rupees and you get to try a little bit of everything from the super traditional to the kind of outlandish stuff that we also have here. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell icon so you know when I post next. And until then, have a great day.